Hi everybody, this is Cleo, um, and today in Minecraft Science we are going to be looking at chemistry. Well, certain parts of chemistry, not all of chemistry, not like from the beginning of time to the end of time, because that would take too long. So I'm just going to go and start for the building blocks of your basic chemical units. And today we're going to talk about atomic structure. And I realise that when I say atomic structure, I mean what we know as relevant in science classes today. However, we know that this isn't 100% accurate, but it's what your basic science is built upon. So I'm going to teach you the basics and it's not 100% true, but it's true enough. And um, once you do this, you can go and do your own research about how true everything is or not. So let's get started. The atomic structure. Welcome to my giant periodic table. It is built just above the clear cube. And today we are going to be using this to talk about atoms. Now, um, I, there are two columns missing. These are the lanthanides and actinides. And normally they get pulled out and they get put on the bottom here. But I couldn't bother, be bothered to do that because I am not going to talk about them probably ever if I do, I will add them on in yellow down the bottom, but I can't be asked. Um, right, so, now, you probably know we all start with hydrogen, and over here is helium, and these atoms get bigger as you go across in rows, okay? So, that's the first thing you need to know, that atoms get bigger as you go across the periodic table, and they get bigger as you go across in rows. However, they also get bigger as you go down the table, pretty much obviously. And you'll notice that I've put them in colour coordinated groups. And there is a reason for this. Okay? And the reason is because a very clever man called Mendeleev, well, Dmitry Mendeleev, let's to give him his full name, um, found out that elements, uh, if you put them, the ones that act the same in rows, you tend to get this pattern. And you can use this, and he used his model to predict um, uh, where specific elements that weren't found yet would be on the periodic table. And he was able to tell us his property. So this, this periodic table, I'm not going to go into it just yet because I find atoms more interesting, so I'm starting with those. But I might do a whole thing about the periodic table later. But yeah, they're in, they're in groups for a specific reason. Okay? And... Um, they also have numbers attached to them. Now, if I go up here, and I'm going to go with my... I'm going to go with lithium because it's easy. Right, lithium. Right, every element has a symbol which starts with a capital letter and any letters after it are lowercase, okay? And that's so that the scientific community, even though they speak different languages, can um, identify elements based on their symbol. Um, they also have numbers. Um, most of the symbols are, in fact I'm going to show you this in a second, most of the symbols are two letters, however, once you get to the really, really big ones, where are you? Yeah, like um, un 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 unium is u u u, un 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 bium is u u b. Now this one is missing. No element here. It's because we've not found it yet. Or at least it wasn't found when the version of the periodic table I used to create it wasn't there. So it immediately looked up to un unquadium. Um, and you'll notice that in the corner they have these numbers. Now, these are the smaller numbers and these particular elements are found... Um, well, they're, they're basically made because they're pretty unstable. But... Um, They've started to, I think this is really incredibly geeky of scientists, but they've actually named uh, the element after the atomic number, okay, because un means one. So, let's go back to lithium. So, here we are at lithium. You'll notice there are two numbers um, attached to lithium. Uh, a, a smaller one at the top and a larger one at the bottom. Now, these numbers are very, very important to scientists and... Um, 
the top one um, is called the proton number or as I was taught when I was at school the atomic number I will probably refer to it as the atomic number is because it's how I learnt and the one at the bottom is called the atomic mass and I don't th actually think I know of another one it might be called the mass number someplace but anyway so smaller ones are the atomic number and the bigger ones are the atomic mass and they relate to two different things okay the atomic number or the proton number tells you how many protons there are in an atom and the bottom one tells you tells you how many uh, electrons and neutrons there are in an atom. well protons and neutrons now for those of you who don't know what i'm talking about when i say protons and neutrons i am going to explain thusly all right so for the purposes of today and probably anything else I do in this series, anything that is red is positive, anything that is blue is negative, and actually that fits in really well with what I'm doing later. So yeah, let's go with that. And anything red is positive, anything blue is negative. Now, scientists knew about atoms for a long time. However, they thought they looked like this, which was a basic generic mass of uh, positive material. Um, and when I say positive, I'm talking about um, positively charged which is um, which is physics basically but um, physics underlies absolutely everything so they thought this was a whole mass of um, positive stuff with a few interspersed bits of negative stuff they called this the plum pudding model and I think you have to be British to truly appreciate um, what we're talking about when we're talking about plum pudding but basically um, okay this is where I discuss plum pudding, for God's sake. Okay, a plum pudding is basically cake with raisins in it. So the red stuff is, so the positive stuff is the cake and the blue negative particles are the raisins. Now a guy called Rutherford um, tested this. And I actually, is Rutherford a guy or a girl? Let me check. Rutherford's a dude. Right, okay. Now he um, tested this by firing these things called alpha particles at um, a thin sheet of gold atom and when I say thin um, you can actually get gold leaf to about three atoms thick so you know very very thin you know like ridiculously thin like wafer thin no wafers are thicker than that so so very very thin and what he found is he found several things um, where's my F1 key there um, what he found was as he push it uh, as he fired these alpha particles through Actually, right, so as he fired these alpha particles through, they either went straight through, and he, he, he measured where they went, basically, around the, the thing. They either went straight through, they either veered off slight, they, as they went from the centre, they veered off. Okay, or they went back on themselves, so they went back this way. Okay. And I'm going to put an arrow there. There they went. Straight through, off to one side, or uh, scattered. And the only way he could... That meant that there wasn't a solid mass. So he found that um, the centre had to be positive, okay? Um, because alpha particles are positive and and if you if you know your basic physics ma mag magnetism although this is electricity really um positives and positives repel so the alpha particle would come through going this is me being an alpha particle go um all right if it hit it direct on it would go oh no let's go back because it's repelled from the center if it's slightly off to one side once it hits here as it's going on its journey it gets deflected because this this mass in the center is pushing back and it goes off to one side so if it hits it goes backwards if it uh, glances off the side it goes off in one direction um, but he also found that most of them and I, I, when I say most I think 95% of the alpha particles went straight past didn't do anything nothing happened to them most of the alpha particles were picked up on a, a, a sensitive thing so what he discovered 
was that the center okay was very very positive okay um and he called those bits in the center protons and the negative bits were so small and minimal that they made no difference so what you actually get is you get a circular model uh with the electrons around the with the negative parts are electrons by the way around the outside you get the um negative part and in the center you've got this massive um strong cohesive positive part okay so in the center strong cohesive positive part protons negative wishy-washy bits around the outside are electrons um, there is also another particle which has been discovered inside this big heavy mass of uh, called neutrons which have no charge and I'm going to represent those by yellow blocks when I need to um, so yellow neutral blue negative red positive okay let's go back to the periodic table hello Mr Pig so here we are back at lithium. Um, as you remember from, I'm assuming you remember, because I think you don't have brains of goldfish, um, the number at the top is the atomic number. And that is how many protons there are. So how many positives there are. Okay. Now, the one at the bottom, and for some reason this one hasn't been indented properly, and I'll fix that later. The number six is how many protons and neutrons there are. Now, neutrons have no charge. Protons have a positive charge. We know from the atomic number that there are three protons, okay, which must mean, if that's how many protons and neutrons there are, there must be three neutrons in the centre. Okay, and they're always in the centre because what they're there for is to stop the protons from repelling from each other, basically. Um, now, you don't get an electric shock every time you touch something. OK, which must mean that the protons and the electrons, the positives and the negatives, must be the same. So not only does the top number tell you how many protons there are, but it also tells you how many electrons there are. OK, in, in a normal atom. OK, we're talking about normal atoms. Nothing's happened to them. They're absolutely normal. Right. So let's create our first lithium atom. Right. Welcome to um, my model atom. Uh, this is actually based on top of the, the Clio cube. And um, let's get my UI back up. Now, we are going to make a lithium atom. Now, um, in the centre, we know that there are three protons. One, two, three. And three neutrons. One, two, three. Because there are three protons, we know that there are three electrons. And we know that the electrons whiz around the outside. Now, hang on. Come on. There we go. Now, we've got our nucleus, which is made of protons and neutrons. Now, we want to counteract those protons with electrons. Now, electrons whiz around the outside in what are known as energy levels. Um, sometimes they're called orbits, sometimes they're called shells. But these electrons fill up these these shells, uh, and I, I was taught to talk, call them shells, so I will call them shells until my dying day, I'm sure. Um, energy levels is the preferred term for the current GCSE syllabus, but, you know, balls to it. Um, it's like being in a car park. This is the first energy level. This is the second energy level. So we're talking about floors in a car park. And if you're a sensible person, you fill up from the bottom first. So you fill up from the inside one first. How many electrons does lithium has? It has one, two, three, because it cancels out the protons. So it has one, two, three. Now, you'll see... See, I told you using blue was a good idea for negative, didn't I? OK, so you've got the nucleus in the centre, bing, um, that's made up of protons and neutrons. And around the outside, you've got three electrons whizzing around, and these things move, so it's a model, it's not a perfect representation. It would take me far too... 
I suppose I could do it with build craft, make make a working. Mo oh god, that would take ages. Would be fun though. Okay, I might do that next time. Um. Anyway, getting beyond myself. So, you f the electrons fill up from the inside out. Now, um, that third energy level which I've brought to do different elements doesn't exist if the element is small enough to not have any electrons out there okay now so this is lithium this is its um, atomic structure three in the center of each three whizzing around the outside let's do something a little bigger but still in the same column okay right so we're in group one that's what the ones in the purple row are called group one metals uh, or the alkali metals these are in fact metals yeah sodium which is half of what you put on your chips if you're british um your fries if you're american i assume so we're going to go two down we're going to go to do potassium which is one of my favorite elements tell me your favorite elements if you want to um and it has an atomic number of 19 so that's how many protons it's got and 39 which is the amount of protons and neutrons it's got so let's go and build this so if it's got uh, 39 protons and neutrons and 19 protons we take 19 away from 39 and we're left with 20 neutrons okay so let's make our atom okay guys so let's start by making our nucleus so one two three four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And this is representative of a nucleus. Uh, the neutrons would be interspersed with this, but I don't have time or the energy. And we have 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20. So our nucleus is made up of 19 protons and 20 neutrons okay so we now need to um, fill up the electron shells on the outside so it's supposed to have 19 electrons so we fill up from the first shell so one two so the first shell only has two electrons it only has two spaces because it's a tiny shell um, but the other ones have room for eight and as you go out and as you make bigger and bigger elements they have room for more but i'm not going into that okay um so there's two three four five six seven eight nine ten right full second shell eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen 16, 17, 18. Oh, we've got a full shell. So we've got three full shells of electrons. Okay. And we need to go up into a fourth shell. And I'm just going to plonk one out here. 19. Okay. So this has an atomic structure of 2881, which means it's got two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, eight in the third shell, and one in the fourth shell. Okay, so if you look back, remember back to lithium, it has an atomic structure of two, one. Right, so you can build any atom using these rules. Okay, uh, you tend to only do in science class in, in high school uh, in Britain, Okay, let's qualify this. You only tend to use the first 20 or so elements um, as you go across the table because that's how we measure the, the first 20 because they're the 20 going across, not down. Um, so you tend not to get any um, any ones bigger than this that you actually use in, in examples, so I'm not going to go into any much more depth. So that's how you make an atom. You find out the atomic number, the atomic mass, then you work out how many protons there are, how many electrons there are. You... Do the nucleus first by mixing the protons and the neutrons together, much better than I should have done it here. Um, and then you fill the electron shells from the inside out,
based on how many spaces they've got available. Okay, this has been Cleo. This has been your how to build an atom tutorial.